Hey, what's up guys? Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 19 of the series of tutorial on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look on how to automatically activate and deactivate some specific section uh, through some super cool and simple checkboxes or um, UI switches in our administration area. Before starting though, just uh, take a look at my project because it's slightly different than uh, the way we left it in episode 18. And if you notice here, we have a package.json with a bunch of gibberish in it and a gulp file.js. If you have no idea what I'm doing, you no idea what is package.json, npm or gulp, just stop for a second and access my newly published series of tutorial of what the hell is Gulp, basically Gulp from, from scratch. I decided to adopt this because I needed an automation toolkit in order to better manage my assets. And if you notice, the project is slightly different also. I have a source folder with the JavaScript and the SCSS. I converted my previous style in SCSS and then everything gets compiled automatically into uh, the assets folder with my usual my script and my style all minified and compiled properly for the browser so if you don't want to spend time if you don't want to waste time quote unquote in learning gulp you don't care at all the only thing that you have to do in order to continue following this tutorial is going to my online repository on github alicad slash wordpress plugin 101 scroll down to the lesson 19 starter and download basically the updated repository. This is the current situation as I am right now. So you can download all these folders, these files, and you're going to have this package.json. Access your project on the terminal and just run npm install. Automatically this command will install all the packages necessary and then we can trigger our gulp watch. We gulp watch automatically our script, our gulp file.js will take a look of uh, detecting any changes that we have in our source folder or our PHP folders and automatically compile the assets for us. That's it. That's the only thing you have to do. If you're confused, I strongly suggest you to pause this video and check the mini series about gulp. It's really interesting. It's really important for a front end developer. But let's continue our tutorial. So what I said at the beginning, what I wanted to do, what I want to achieve in this tutorial is to um, finally use properly this manage settings section in our administration area to have the ability to activate and deactivate all the custom stuff that we're going to generate. So for example, if we access our source code, we go inside the readme. Here I listed at the beginning of this tutorial all the things that I want to build. So a modular admin area, a custom post time manager, taxonomy, widgets, and blah, blah, blah. All these stuff I want to give the ability to the user to activate and deactivate all these sections of my plugin through a modular administration area. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to list all the settings and features of our plugin here with a checkbox to activate. Every time we activate and we save the settings, that section that we activated should appear available here in the left sidebar. So we need to change both JavaScript, CSS and PHP. First, let's generate the settings area in a useful way because right now it's just place order stuff that we don't actually need. So let's access our ink folder and let's access our admin page folder. And here is the page that we are tapping our customly generated settings API and we are creating all those settings, sections and fields in order to generate those stuff. So first, let's update a bunch of things. I want to change the name from Alicad option group to actually let's select them all to Alicad underscore plugin underscore settings. Let's check what we're doing here in the settings. We are calling the Alicad options group in the callback. So if we access the callback admin uh, callback here and we check for that method, we're just simply returning the input that in our case is just this input here, the text is an example, but we don't need to do that. We need to list in our settings all those fields that we want to activate for our custom options. So let's copy this list here and let's paste it as a comment so we have a reference. Actually, let me open another tab to the left. And to the left, let me open the 
readme.md perfect i have this list now i can basically generate all the things that i need here so the options name it's gonna be cpt manager the second one is gonna be the taxonomy underscore manager and because all of these things will be checkboxes, I can repeat this callback, but let's change this callback to a more eloquent one, something that I can recognize more easily. So instead of like generic alicat options grouped, let's say checkbox sunny ties. So we're gonna pass all these checkboxes through this callback and then we are gonna sanitize the checkbox if we want just to avoid that the user injects something weird through the checkbox via, I don't know, the HTML or something like that. So we can copy this callback also here because we're gonna have everything with the same callback and let's keep continuing. We created the custom post type manager, the custom taxonomy manager, now the widgets to upload and display media in the sidebar. So let's say give it a comma duplicate the stuff let's call it media widget do we have other widgets uh, 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 no i don't think so so just the media widgets perfect just check box sanitize another option is the gallery manager then we're gonna have the testimonial testimonial dash manager i love this type of manager it's really easy to remember and understand that custom template sections we don't need to activate these actually yes templates underscore manager and then let's copy these the uh, sign up manager or let's say login yes login manager and then membership protected area and chat system okay then let's say membership manager and then again the chat manager perfect we created all these options now let's create the sanitization for our checkbox because we are gonna pass all these options as a simple checkbox so a, a toggle that it's gonna be basically value or zero or one is checked or not and we want to sanitize this so let's access the admin callbacks and actually let's say instead of having a generic admin callbacks here we can create a separated type of callbacks that we can use just for the specific type of settings that's the beauty of this modularity of object-oriented programming we can have a small files that take care of a lot of things in a modular way so let's create another type of callback by saying that dollar this callbacks underscore mngr stands for manager and you can call these however you want let's create a new one called uh, manager callbacks and perfect we need to duplicate also this because we need to declare these as a publicly accessible variable and then let's duplicate this callback by saying that this one is gonna be um manager callbacks perfect let's rename these to manager callbacks that extends the base controller and here we need to basically delete everything let's maintain the api for the callbacks and let's delete all of this stuff and here we need to pass the only variable or the only method that we're currently calling in our callbacks that in our case is, let's scroll down, is checkbox sanitize, is the sanitization of the checkbox. And of course, uh, I'm naming this stuff just on the top of my head, like I didn't organize this properly before the tutorial I should have done that, but it's okay. The good thing about this is that if you don't like the name, if for example, we end up using this class to handle all the sanitization of our HTML markups, like checkboxes, uh, dropdowns, or I don't know, input fields, we can rename these class manager callbacks to, I don't know, sanitization callbacks or sanitize callbacks and stuff like that, and put all our sanitization callbacks in here. So it's gonna be like pretty easy to readapt your code or write it as you wish, as you want. That is, it makes sense for you in terms of like namings and stuff like that. And here to sanitize a checkbox, basically we can do a couple of things. First, we can uh, filter this checkbox in order to accept just 
uh, an integer number if you want to pass one or zero or we can do it in a boolean way and the boolean way is the easiest one but we're gonna see both we're gonna comment that and we're gonna see how our code interacts with these two solutions so the first one is to return this input before actually returning completely from the function is to pass it through a filter variable so let's use a filter var that it's a built-in method of PHP and the first parameter has to be the actual variable that we want to sanitize in our case is the input the second is the declaration of what type of sanitization we want to apply for this filter and has to be written all uppercase and the filter that we want to use is filter underscore sanitize underscore number underscore int so if we decided that our input is gonna only care about one and zeros, we should specify that this filter or this return it's valid only if the input is an actual integer. So if zero or one and that's it. Let's close this second window that we don't need. Or the other method is to check simply if the checkbox is checked. So we don't care if the checkbox is an integer. We don't care if the checkbox has a value or whatever. We just care if the actual checkbox is checked. So it's getting passed through the HTTP post request of our entire form. And in order to do that, we can just simply say return, open and close the regular brackets. And let's say, hey, is this set? the input and if the input is set so question mark we can return true so we handle it as a boolean otherwise we can return false directly and so in our database we're gonna manually say to our php code to store only through and false we're not gonna actually store the input field but we're gonna just store boolean value and it doesn't matter if the input that we're passing has a number has a string has whatever special characters the user wants to inject we're just gonna check if this input is inside the form request the post request we're gonna store true otherwise we're gonna store false let's maintain this really simple method for now and let's continue working on our administration area let's go back in our admin.php now we created all these settings here with custom post type manager taxonomy manager and blah 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 let's continue by editing the set section so right now we are setting the alicad admin index section that it's okay i mean uh, it referenced the first page of our administration era, so it's fine. The title, let's update it like settings manager because that's what we want to do. Here we have the Alligat admin section as a callback, but let's change it to a manager callbacks. So let's switch to manager callbacks and let's call it admin section manager. So let's transition these and let's open the our manager callback and let's create the public function admin section manager. No parameters needs to be passed. And let's see what we're doing here. We were simply echoing a message here. So instead of simply echoing this stuff, actually, let's comment these two methods that we're not using anymore. We can echo actually activate the sections and features of this plugin or actually manage the sections and features of this plugin by activating the checkboxes from the following list or something like that. I'm not great at writing these introductions but that's what I want to write so that's perfect and we changed to admin section manager so we're using these manager callbacks to handle everything that's perfect the alicat plugin page is the first page that we generated so here we don't have to touch anything else that's perfect now we need to set all the fields for all the stuff that we generated for every single settings the cpt manager taxonomy manager and blah 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 so let's do it it's gonna be kind of annoying going up and down but but what can you do actually in order to help us let's split again our layout to two views so view layout columns two and let's simply copy paste all this stuff on the second without actually saving this file but I don't want to go back and forth like up and down because it's gonna be really annoying so let's use this double view to just copy paste all the unique names for my fields that I generated and then actually generate these fields with these unique identifiers. It's gonna be way easier than constantly going up and down on my 
code editor and give you like a nauseous feeling. Okay, that's perfect. We have everything. Let's scroll down and let's shrink this a little bit. Okay, more readable. Perfect. So DID, we need to change it with custom post type manager and let's actually cut it out. So we're not going to get confused. Perfect. Activate custom post CPT manager. The page is correct. The section is correct. Is the section that we just generated here. Automatically, we change to custom post type manager and the example class, we can actually leave it out because I don't want to give it any type of class, but we need to customize the look and feel of this thing. And in this case, we're doing it via the callback. So if we check what callback we are calling the alicat text example in our admin callbacks, and here we're simply printing an input field and escaping the attribute for our custom option. So basically, we have to do exactly the same on our manager callbacks. And right now, the way we're doing it, basically, we created two different methods to print the same input field and just like getting the option of the text example. So we're manually writing the actual ID of the option, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to be forced to build one single, like one callback for every type of field that I'm generating. I want to just one single callback. So let's do that. Let's access the manager callbacks and let's create a public function checkbox field. And in this checkbox field that it's a callback, we're going to get automatically a list of arguments where we can grab all the information of our field. And here we can, uh, for now, let's not return anything, but let's actually var dump our list of arguments. And of course, we're going to break our code now because we need to see what's inside the argument. So we're var dumping everything. So it's not going to be pretty, but we need to do it. Unfortunately, here we need to change the callbacks to the callbacks manager and call our newly freshly generated checkbox field callback checkbox field. Okay, perfect. And let's actually comment these out or oh, let's completely delete it because we don't need to open these other ones. So let's save it and let's see if we broke everything in our administration area. Let's refresh. And of course, I forgot to include the manager callbacks file that I just generated. So if we scroll back up all the way in our administration area here, I'm calling a new manager callbacks, but I'm not including it here because I'm not a smart person. So let's duplicate these and let's use include API callbacks manager callbacks. Okay. Yes. Don't forget about these really important stuff. Okay. Let's refresh. Perfect. And look what we got here. So we are activating our, our settings manager title, the description, the awful, awful description that I defined before the title of our first, first field, the activate custom post type manager here, I'm doing a var dump. So I'm printing the array with the label for the custom post type manager. That's why I'm creating the label here. And actually for the label, I could also set up something else. Like I could set up like some uh, custom classes that I want to generate for that field. And actually, actually let's do it because it's going to be really, really important. So the label should always match the ID because we need that to get the actual option. And then the second option is going to be the class and the class. I want these to have UI dash toggle and we're going to see later why we're doing this, but it's going to be pretty cool. So if we refresh our administration area, now we have also the class UI toggle. That's perfect. So now that we know that all the arguments are inside these super handy args array, what we can do, we can simply generate dynamically the checkbox field uh, just once for all the fields that we're going to have. And we're going to just dynamically grab all the information. We don't need any more to specify one single one and just get the option of each one of them because who cares? We have our beautiful, beautiful array. So let's say that let's generate a variable called a uh, checkbox and checkbox is going to be equal to get the option, whatever we have saved in the database. And we have if we don't have anything, that's going to be totally fine. So the get option, we define it that it's going to be inside the arguments array and our arguments is the label 
underscore that it's identical to the ID. That's perfect. Now we can return our customly generated input field. So let's say input type equal to checkbox. Perfect. And then the name it's equal to our arguments label for and actually we can generate another variable because it's going to be way easier. So name it's going to be to it's going to be equal to arguments label for and then we can duplicate these is going to be class equal to class or actually classes classes. Yeah, it's perfect. And then here we can say that the checkbox get the option based on the name that is the label for a name we can print also in our case, the name. And now let's continue by saying, hey, the value we want this to be equal to one. So we're going to pass one only if this is checked, but it doesn't really matter because the sanitization we did it like detecting if it's true or false. So even if we pass a variable of ASD or something, whatever, but let's pass a, a value like just an integer number. So it's easier to manage. And here we can specify the class that it's going to be equal to. Yes, you guessed it right to the class. Let's concatenate these things with the classes variable. Perfect. Let's close the input field. The last thing that we can do, we can check if the option is there. If it's set the option, we can check the checkbox. We can check the checkbox. Does it make sense? If the option is not in the database, so the get option is completely empty, is not set, the checkbox will not be checked. So that kind of makes sense, right? The thing that we have to do simply, of course, concatenate again these things. And let's say that if the dollar checkbox is checked, and let's put everything into regular brackets. If it's checked, let's return checked. Otherwise, nothing. Let's save it. Let's copy the checkbox field here. Let's go back in the admin or oh, already doing that. So let's see if we broke something. Let's refresh. And we have a big issue here on line 25 undefined index classes. Where, where, where? We forgot something. Classes, classes, args, class. It's class is not classes. Sorry, we are passing the arguments called class, not classes. My bad, totally forgot about it. Okay, perfect. Everything is empty. Why? Because are we returning this? Oh, sorry. I don't have to return it. I have to echo it. That it's totally my fault. That it's a huge mistake. But anyway, hey, we have our um, checkbox. If we inspect the element, look at that. Let me zoom in a little bit. We have our type checkbox with the name of the same uh, checkbox field here, the same ID that we specified the value and the UI toggle class. So if we check it and we save the changes, oh, options page not found. Ha, huh, I completely forgot to update something. So do you remember here? In our admin, we changed this stuff to uh, from uh, Alicad options group or something like that to Alicad plugin settings. Well, we didn't do it in our actual template page. So if we access the admin.php here, we're still calling the Alicad options group. And that's where our um, submission of the form is trying to point. But we don't have that page anymore. We didn't set it up. So let's save this and let's go back in our page. Let's go back there, refresh. Okay, now if we check and we save the changes, there you go, setting saved. And as you can see here, our checkbox is checked that it's marvelous and fantastic. So the only thing that we have to do, the only thing that we have left because we created our stuff in a modular way is just simply in the admin area. Let's scroll all the way. Let's duplicate these things for all these other settings, but pretty much without changing anything because the callback is just one in the way we created in a modular way, automatically, we're going to pass the value that we need and the checkbox will be generated automatically. So that's super cool. Let's start duplicating this array to generate all the section that we want. So we have the custom post type manager, but this is actually the taxonomy manager. So let's activate 
taxonomy manager beautiful let's duplicate this stuff and instead of the taxonomy manager is the media widget boom activate media widget wonderful isn't it so easy let's speed up let's jump this section because it's just gonna be copy paste and update all these things done isn't that fantastic so what we did in our admin.php is just duplicating all these fields and setting all these fields for the same thing and just changing the ID and the actual title. But I know it's kind of annoying, it's kind of frustrating, but the good thing is that we were able, thanks to our modular object-oriented programming, we were able to call just one simple callback in order to handle the generation of the checkbox and being modular in that way. So every time we need in the future to update this checkbox, if we want these to be reusable in other sections or we want to change the style of the checkbox we can just update the code on one single section so this is fantastic and here finally we have our full list of options that we can activate and manage independently in our administration area so in the next lesson we're gonna first style these in a really cool way i'm gonna show you how and then we are gonna basically hook these options to the activation of this custom section. So if everything is deactivated, nothing will appear here. But if everything is activated, all these custom cool things will appear in this section. So that's gonna be pretty awesome. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel, and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys, and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.